This is the GAC Weekly presented by the Great American Conference. I'm Joey McWilliams. We have back-to-back episodes previewing the GAC basketball tournaments, which are coming up this week, and also some sad news to report a little bit later on. To basketball right now and the women's side of the tournament bracket. Eight teams have made the playoffs once again, and the postseason looks like this. The first game of the weekend, which will be Thursday, March 7th, and will run through Sunday, March 10th. The first game is the second seed, East Central, taking on the number seven seed, Arkansas Tech. That is a noon tip time to get things underway in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. East Central, 21-7 overall, 16-6 in league play. Has the league's best defense, giving up less than 60 points per game, 59 9.8 each outing, and the Tigers have won seven straight, led by seniors Lakin Priestner and Tia Williams, who are putting up right at 13 points per game. Arkansas Tech is the number seven seed, unfamiliar territory for the Golden Suns, 13 and 15 overall, 10 and 12 in league play. They struggled early, but have won five of the last eight, led by Hannibal Lines, 13.9 points per game, and she's hitting three pointers at a 50% clip. Again, that is a noon tip time on Thursday. The second game of the tournament on the women's side of the bracket will pit the number one seed, Southwestern, against rival number eight seed, Northwestern. Southwestern, and we will talk about the Lady Bulldogs a little bit later on in the program, 27-1 overall, 22-0 in GAC play. First time that a team has gone through the GAC regular season schedule unscathed, led by Haley Tucker and Hayden Pretty, 19 points and 17 points per game, number three and four in the conference in scoring. Bethany Franks leading the way on the rebounding side with 8.6 boards per game. Northwestern into the postseason for the first time as a Division II program, 12 and 17 overall, 9 and 13 in GAC play. And when these two teams take the court, four of the top 10 scorers in the league will be on the court likely at the same time. We talked about Tucker and Pretty. Bailey Brown, 14.8 points per game, and Kaylee King, 14.3 points per game for the Rangers. And by the way, that will be on Thursday at 545. Friday action looks like this. It's number four seed Harding taking on number five seed Henderson State. That is a noon tip time as well on Friday. And Harding, 20 and 8. Overall, 15-7 and seven in league play, led by Kelly Lampo, who is second in the league in scoring 19.1 points per game and sixth in the league in rebounding 7.5 boards per game, a candidate for player of the year in the conference as they take on the Reddies, 18-10 and 10 overall, 13-9 and nine in GAC play. Second leading offense, putting up 71.9 points per game, led by Pink Jones, who is second in assists, 4.5 assists per outing, and ninth in scoring at 15.4 points per game. The final game of the first round of the tournament, quarterfinal action, has number three seed Southern Nazarene taking on number six seed Southeastern. That is at 215 on Friday afternoon. Southern Nazarene at 16 and 12, 15 and 7 overall, had a season ending loss at Monticello, but lost only four games since the calendar turned to 2019. Well, Southern Nazarene scores 62.5 points a game, gives up 62.5 points per game, but also look for Abby Nehues on the inside, who has an incredible 3.7 blocks per outing. Adrienne Berry leads the way for the Crimson Storm with 11.7 points per game. Crimson Storm taking on the Savage Storm, Southeastern the sixth seed, 14 and 12 overall, 12 and 10 in league play. Had a four-game losing streak to open the month of February, but have won three of the last four. Katie Webb, who is the only player in the top ten in the conference in points, rebounds, and assists, the league's leading scorer, hasn't seen action since an injury on February 7th. Freshman Briley Moon looked for her to take up some of the slack for scoring for Southeastern. And that is a look at the quarterfinals. We talked about Southwestern, the number one seed, the preseason favorite in the conference, and for good reason, bringing back Tucker and Pretty as seniors. We had a chance to visit with Coach Kelsey Music about this season. And, yes, winning a regular season championship was something that was one of the preseason goals, but they've taken it to a new level. You know, I think this team has worked really hard. I thought, like, you know, I think we've talked about before last year, 
you know, we were able to, to win the regular season, which we haven't been able to do at Swasu and, and obviously they wanted to repeat and, you know, they just took it to a whole nother level and the maturity and just the, just the grit and the desire of this team, it, it just it keep, continues to impress me, but especially of these seniors, they're doing a great job of leading and their determination is, is quite impressive. So much has been said about the defense this year and the switch that you made on defense to really uh, make that a priority. Can you talk about that one more time, and, and does it continue to bode well for your team as you move along? Absolutely. You know, um, you know, we, like we said, we, I, we won the regular season last year, um, but, you know, we didn't win the conference tournament, and I didn't feel like we were playing as good as ba- of basketball as we needed to, you know, in March when you have the opportunity to, to win and, and move forward. And, you know, we got to – we made it to the national tournament, which was, was a – you know, a great thing, but to be able to uh, get there and then to lose in such a close fought game versus Fort Hayes, I think it left a sour taste in their mouth as far as my team. But I knew personally as a coach, I had to do something a little different. We had to do some, you know, our offense had always been able to score at a high pace. Um, but defensively, I just knew we needed to do something if I wanted to take it to another level. And, you know, I did my research and I decided to, to go all in with with our full court press and the pressure defense. And it has definitely played, paid off in, in dividends for us. You know, the biggest thing is I think initially, I think my team thought I was crazy because all of it, obviously all of them don't have the speed and strength of Tyra Aska. But once they realized what I expected of them and, you know, once we were able to win some games by double digits and they saw, man, we're winning at a higher rate. We're winning by more points. They really bought in, and it has really taken off for us. It's been a difference because we've been able to force those turnovers. But to, you know, and now our focus is you have to transition those turnovers into points for us. We have to capitalize on those turnovers. So um, the, the defense has definitely been a huge part because it's allowed us to to continue to score at a high rate, but to not be as as flawless on defense because we always made mistakes, and this kind of hides some of our mistakes, I believe. <laughs> And coach, I think all of us wish that we were as strong and as fast as Tyraska. That would <laughs> that would be great. Well, you you can't move on though without talking about the offense. You're scoring at 86 plus points a game, better than 14 points more than the second highest scoring team in the conference. It's an offense that continues to produce as well. You all have not slacked off in that level. You know, absolutely not. You know, we always want to get to the rim. Uh, well, once we force the issue of getting to the rim, it allows us to hopefully get to the free throw line a little bit, and we're pretty good free throw shooters. But, of course, we still put up the three ball, and I just think it's a, it's a fun offense. Um, that's one reason some of them, I believe, came here, because we score at a high rate. Um, it's fun to play. They get a little bit of freedom. It's not, a, it's not necessarily a set in which – a certain person's going to take the shot. They have that freedom in which they get to play together and, and to be good teammates. And, you know, it's fun. We've tweaked it a little bit as far as we, you know, we've made some game time adjustments as, as far as moving our post a little bit as teams have seen, but it's just a fun offense to be able to run as far as getting to the rim, sharing the basketball. And when they all get into the right spots and get into the groove of sharing the basketball, it, it's a really pretty offense to watch. Coach, you face a familiar foe in your first-round opponent. Of course, the GAC tournament just right now. It's, it's, it's here. It is upon us. Talk about facing Northwestern in that first round and, and uh, your strive to achieve a conference tournament championship. You know, obviously, Northwestern's done a great job this year. Um, they, they made it to the tournament. I'm, I'm Obviously, that's probably one of their goals is to make it to the tournament. And, you know, they do things – it's just a rival matchup, so it's obviously an intense game. And so they they usually run quite a bit of zone, and sometimes they throw some different defenses at us. So we just have to be prepared to make adjustments, and, and we have to make sure we get the ball inside out and share the basketball. But, you know, in order to win a tournament, you're, we are going to have to elevate our game. That's one thing I've been talking to my team about. We have to elevate our game. You know, we have to capitalize on turnovers. We have to finish little dinks at the rim. We have to make our free throws, and then we, we've got to make some more threes right now in this little stretch. When we go to Bartlesville, we have to have some good shooting nights in, in order for us to win three in a row, which is obviously our goal. Southwestern again will take on Northwestern at 545 on Thursday evening in Bartlesville, the top seed versus the number eight seed. We close this episode on a sad note. The GAC lost another member of the family last week, Washita softball coach Mike McGee, who's in his 17th season with the Tigers, passed away following a battle with cancer. 
Washita Athletic Director David Sharp reflected on Coach McGee and his time with the school and with the program. We are deeply saddened here at Washita Baptist University and Washita Athletics with uh, with his passing, and um, we are um, we are very very fortunate and thankful and grateful for everything that he brought to Washita softball. He he has been a part or was a part of the program. Uh, for every year than its existence, except for one, um, he came and he uh, he he's he's built what we have. Not only uh, structurally with the facilities down there, with the help of some friends and and relationships that that helped him get some some physical things done down there, but he's also built the kind of program with his student athletes that anybody and everybody not only would be proud of, but they respected the. The expectations that he had from his student athletes is from an academic standpoint, going to class, but also from their values and just the, the way that they conducted themselves on and off the field was respected by all. And uh, that's that's just a tribute to him and who he was and what he expected. Academically, he, he was Mike. Mike was um, was was proud that he received his degree from Washington Baptist University the first couple of years when he was an assistant coach. He did not have a degree. We helped him to receive that. Then he became head coach, and uh, he was proud to get that, and that's one of the reasons that he was so, so adamant about his student-athletes going to class, not missing class, and and their academic work. Uh, he um, uh, He was a tireless recruiter and a hard worker. He loved working on his field, and it was always immaculate. Uh, he loved the grass a certain way and wouldn't let anybody else do it, drug the dirt a certain way, wouldn't let anybody else do it, but he loved loved the hard work. But he was also a tireless recruiter in all the years that I, I you know, that he was our coach. He would drive many, many miles through the day, through the night, on the weekends, in the summer, in the fall, to see players, to see commitments that he already had, to see people that had already signed early, just to see them play, uh, you know, in a summer game or a, or a high school game. But uh, they would see him there, and that was definitely resembled, or you would that was reflected with the relationships that developed with those student athletes and the respect and love that they had for, for him. Uh, I, I can't um, say enough that I, we our prayers and thoughts are with his wife, Debbie, with his daughter, Beth, his son, Ryan, and uh, but also with the 24 members of that softball team. He was asked in the hospital how many kids he had, and he told the doctor 24, and the, the uh, doctor looked at his wife, Debbie, and she, uh, I think she... She said that, you know, that's his softball team. And uh, so he he considered them family, and uh, we want to keep all of them in our prayers. This has been the GAC Weekly. The GAC Weekly is presented by the Great American Conference. To hear and see this and more about the GAC and other college and high school sports, please visit oklomasports.net and arkansasports.net.